Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in the SFML video series. In this lesson, we're going to be learning about fonts, that is how to draw text to the screen. If you recall, in one of the previous lessons, we talked about drawable objects and one of those is in fact text. So let's go ahead and take a look at it in this next lesson. All right. So recall that we have different drawable objects that we can draw to our screen. I've got our code from a previous lesson, just showing how we loaded a Mona Lisa image loaded that as a texture, then drew it as a sprite, and then eventually called the window.draw, which drew some drawable thing. Now it's important for us in our multimedia applications and games to also be able to have text as well. So I'm going to click on drawable here and we'll have an idea of the different drawable things that exist. So again, you'll note that one of those things is text here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it and let's go ahead and see how we can get some text onto our screen. So the constructor itself looks pretty self-explanatory here. We've got some text here and we've got a string here, a font and a character size and well, a couple different things here. So let's go ahead and try to figure out what's going on here from our constructor. Now it looks like there's something also known as a font here. So we're going to have to perhaps set up a font as well. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the font class and we'll take a look here. Now, Fonts themselves are a little bit interesting and we'll want to think about how we actually set those up. So we've got, again, a constructor for a font and we'll have to load it from file in some way. Now, again, the great thing about SFML is it's ready to go with lots of different uh, file formats that it can load. So true type fonts being one of the common ones. Now, a common way to think about how fonts are loaded, now this isn't all of them, is you essentially have this giant grid here of different rows and within those rows will be different unicode or whatever characters so you'll have the a character b c then maybe lowercase a b c etc and the different types of alphabets would follow along and so on so essentially that's what's in one of these font files so what we're going to need to do is do a quick search to find a font and download it and bring it into our project so for this i'm just going to open up firefox and search for free fonts and perhaps more specifically let's say free fonts TTF because true type fonts are usually a little bit easier to work with and uh, that's what I'm familiar with so I'm essentially just going to pick one here that looks interesting let's try this one here um, that's free for personal use here and we'll just go ahead and download the zip file and I'm just going to extract that into our actual folder here. So let's just go ahead and extract all the data here. And I'll go ahead and show the files here and you'll see we have this font here 28 days later. All right, so that sounds pretty cool here. So let me go ahead and close all of this here. And again, we'll just take a look at our API and start setting things up. So again, essentially we need to be able to load the font up with the SF font uh, object here. So let's go ahead and do a new SF font and I'm just going to call it font. And I'll want to do font.load from file. Again, keep an eye on this documentation. It's just the string here. And we have the relative path here for 28 days later. So let's go ahead and use this. And I'll close the quotations here. All right, and again, just working from our documentation, we have our constructor and that looks like there's pretty much all there is to it. We could get some other information that might be stored in the font and feel free to play around with or read the documentation a little bit just if you want to get some of the settings here. All right, so with that said, I think we're done with our font and I'm going to go ahead and look at creating a text here. So let's just go ahead and create SF text and it looks like we're going to need some string for the text. Uh, and I'm just going to give this a label since we have the Mona Lisa from our previous lesson uh, labeled here. Uh, the actual font that we're using, that's this uh, actual object here uh, that I'll highlight. And then we need to fix uh, or pick the size here. And I'm just going to say 30 for now. All right. So with that said, let's go ahead and try to draw this. Now we might have to do some other work here. Uh, in fact, I'm going to just look through the uh, API here, meaning that we might want to set the position of our uh, actual text somewhere and see what happens here. And let's actually give uh, this object a name. I'm just going to do lowercase text here and a comment, load a font and set up a test uh, text for us. 
Okay, and again, this is some drawable object here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw it. Draw our text. So I can do window.draw and the text here. And I'll go ahead and give this a compile. And again, I'll show you that full line here just in case you're having uh, trouble compiling. No mistakes, always lucky here. And I'll run our program here. And we can see our text is overlaid here nicely. And in fact, that's quite nice um, that it works like that. Now, I did do something subtle here in this lesson that you may or may not have noticed. And that was that I put the text rendering after our sprite. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and switch the order there and recompile these. And you'll notice that this time the uh, image is on top of the actual text here. So this is something known as the painter's algorithm, where basically the things that we draw first are going to get overlapped by the things that we draw that follow after. So we do have to consider this order. Now there's ways to take care of this. You can sort of have a priority, or if you've done any CSS programming or these kind of things, you specify a Z index, uh, some integer that sort of specifies. These are all abstractions that we could build on top of our uh, program right now, but we don't have to worry about those necessarily. So all I'm going to do is just flip the order back to how we had it, drawing first our sprite and then the text after so that it'll overlap. Um, but I do want to just make one or two more changes to our text just to move it and maybe center it a little bit uh, on the screen here. So let's go ahead and uh, once we have our text here, do text, move, and I'm just going to shift it over 100 units and do 0.0f uh, for the y, because that doesn't need to be changed. And I'll rerun this, and we can see something that's a little bit better here where we have uh, it more centered. In fact, I'll go ahead and just increase the font size because I think uh, it'll look even sharper. Uh, but you can have a lot of fun with this, and your homework uh, going forward is to try to download some fonts and see uh, what you can build here. With what we've been learning previously, you can already start to build some really powerful applications. For instance, you could hit different keys to load different fonts and display the text to sort of get a nice preview of what they would look like. And you might even think about some other functionality you can do with the text here, like for instance, calculating its width from the transform and trying to figure out how you could always center the text based off of the window height. So those are just a few hints and some things that you might want to try in your applications. So with that said, though, folks, I hope you enjoyed this. This is another nice uh, lesson demonstrating all the things that SFML allows us to very quickly and easily do. So if you've been enjoying this, make sure that you like and subscribe so you don't miss any future lessons. And we'll see you in the next one.